You can tell from the answers here, this one's probably gonna be annoying. Uh, there are a couple ways to solve it. I'll give you two. Um, the, the, the way that most people are probably gonna dive into this is uh, you're probably learning slope in school. So that formula's on your mind, you're just kinda into it. So hopefully we do know that formula. The slope of a line, uh, the way I learned it, or the way I like to teach it, I should say, is y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. You may have learned it backwards where it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That does not matter. I think it's kind of stupid that we have a formula where two comes before one. That, that's so dumb to me. Why would we do that? It's harder to remember as it is. So why make it more complicated? So that's why I just do one and two because they're in the order that they appear in your brain. So whatever way you like, the key is whatever point we choose to be first has to be first on the top and first on the bottom. Same thing with the second one. Second on the top, second on the bottom. So let's just go in the order that they give it to us, right? So let's do this is point one, this is point two. So we would have the y's on top. So zero is the first y, and then minus 86 thirds over, now the first x, negative four, minus zero. So we get negative 86 thirds divided by negative four, right? So the zeros are gonna let a lot of things go away, but we do have to worry about these negatives that appear in this formula. A lot of people ignore those negatives when there are other negatives in the formula. So just be careful, um, or in the points I should say, just be careful. Now I would use the principles of uh, keep, change, flip, which is how we deal with dividing um, fractions, and at this point we could just go to the calculator, we could go to Desmos, but I'm just gonna, this is a good review of how to do it just in case. So the way that keep change flip works is we keep the top fraction, so I'm gonna come down here, so negative 86 over three. We change division to multiplication, and we flip the bottom fraction upside down, right? So instead of negative four over one, we're gonna do one over negative four. Now, multiplication of two fractions is the simplest thing that you can do with fractions. Just multiply across the tops, multiply across the bottoms. But we can also simplify as we go. So first of all, I'm gonna get rid of these two negatives because two negatives make a positive, so we can get rid of that with multiplication. I also know that 86 is gonna be divisible by at, at least two, right? So I'm gonna say, okay, 86 is two times what, 43? And four is two times two. So I can get rid of one of the twos and now I do have a bunch of prime numbers. So now I can just do the multiplication. 43 times one on the top, and then three times two, three times two on the bottom is six. So 43 over six should be the slope choice C. And that is the answer. So, okay, not terrible, not so bad. Um, a lot of fractions, a lot of negatives, things we might not be comfortable with. There are different points where we could have gone to the calculator and, and let that handle it. Um, in fact, I think at this stage here, we could have even just put that in the calculator as long as we're careful with parentheses uh, or the, the levels that Desmos gives us for fractions. As, as long as we're careful, it, it probably would have solved that fine. Um, but let's, let's look at another way to do this. Um, I tend to like the plug points into equation method. So plug points into equations. It's just a good way to get started, especially when you are confused. And in a way, that's what we did originally too. The equation was the slope formula and the points were the points that we were given and we plugged them in the slope formula. But um, we can also use the standard equation, y equals mx plus b for a line, because they tell us it's a line, right? Um, the line n. So now how do we plug things in? Well. Uh, we can plug in the y-intercept because that's what the b is. So that would be plus 86 thirds as the b. And then the x-intercept doesn't kind of neatly fit into the equation. The m is the slope, which is what we're solving for. So we should probably leave that as an m. And then, but whether it's an x-intercept or any other point, we can just kind of put that in and um, like put it in for x and y and just let it sit wherever we need it to sit. So the, the, the x is negative four and the y is zero. So just like that, I kind of end up with something very similar to what, the, what math I did before. I have zero is equal to negative four M plus 86 thirds. So we could subtract 86 thirds from both sides. We'd have negative 86 thirds is equal to negative four M. And then look, we'd end up dividing by negative four, which is kind of exactly what we did before, right? We had negative 86 thirds divided by negative four. But for whatever reason, maybe it's just me, but at this stage here, I'm more inclined to just go to Desmos and let it handle it. So zero is equal to negative four, 
we'll just do X uh, plus 86, oop, 86 thirds. And so there you go. It's, it's going to solve it the same way we've seen in other questions for this is that when we have an equation with one variable, no matter where that variable is, it's going to treat it like just something to solve and it's going to give us a vertical line if there is a solution. And we can tap it and we can see what that value is, 7.167. So that's my value of m. Now I, I did switch it to x because I wanted it to fall on the xy plane, but that was the only adjustment I made. So 7.167 would be my value of m. 7.167. And then at that point, it's just go to the, the choices and find the one that equals that. Well, A and B definitely don't because those are both going to be less than 1. And then in my calculator, I would just do 43 divided by 6. Or I could do it in Desmos too, but that's 7.167. And 344 divided by 3 is huge, 114.7, let's say. So we would see that C is right without having to deal with all the fractions. So lots of options, lots of options. Um, find whatever you like. You know, I think a big part of the PSAT and eventually the SAT is that lots of questions are gonna have multiple potential solutions. Try to, in your practice, figure out which solutions you do best with, whether they come to you fastest, whether you're more accurate with them, they just feel more comfortable with them, whatever it may be. My advice overall though is try to make algebra your last resort. As little algebra as possible that you have to do, that's probably better for your state of mind and for your score because then you're not gonna make as many algebra mistakes. So the, the strategies help, the calculator helps, but whatever you do, just if you are in trouble, think about plug points and new equations. Sometimes we have to provide the equation as a formula or a line y equals mx plus b, but it's still a good starting place for most questions on the SAT.